DNA polymerases. Uh, from our previous discussion, uh, we also have the idea that uh, DNA polymerases, they are very important in the process of DNA synthesis or even in in vitro uh, DNA amplification. DNA polymerases, which is the first time in uh, 1955, mein Arthur Kornberg and his other workers were able to isolate it from E. coli bacterium. And its name was uh, DNA polymerase 1. Then, with the passage of time, other types of DNA polymerases were also uh, discovered. But overall, at the beginning, uh, we can say that DNA polymerases, they are very important uh, in the process of DNA amplification. DNA polymerases, they require uh, different uh, uh, factors to work or uh, the requirements, they may be one or two. The major requirement, uh, uh, first, it is the presence of DNA template. Uh, Amplify karna chahte hain, it must be available, uh, suppose in uh, double stranded form. So, usse humne jaise dekha ki uski uh, jo hai denaturation hogi, ya in case of in vivo system or biological system, uh, the replication fork will be uh, formed and then re DNA replication it will uh, start in a semi conservative manner as explained. Uh, in different books of molecular biology. Uh, DNA template ke ilawa jo uh, dusri fundamental requirement hai, it is the presence of the primers. So naturally, uh, biological system mein primers jo hain, uh, ye hote hain normally short uh, segments of the uh, DNA uh, or even in most of the cases, uh, they may be formed of RNA. Uh, and after binding with the complementary sequence in the template DNA, um, they will provide three prime hydroxyl group uh, that will direct the synthesis of the uh, DNA complementary strands. As I told you that according to the information uh, that uh, is contained in the template DNA, so it will guide the synthesis of the complementary strand. Another uh, important uh, uh, factor in DNA uh, synthesis is that uh, what type of DNA polymerase uh, it is being involved in DNA replication. Uh, and if we uh, uh, discuss this in broader pers perspective that uh, uh, DNA polymerase it is involved in the uh, adding of new bases uh, in the uh, DNA strands when we compare it with the uh, target DNA molecule. So, according to the information, the DNA polymerase will keep on adding the nucleotide bases. After adding the nucleotide bases, it will dissociate from the DNA fragment. And after dissociation, again it will bind and uh, continue the addition of new bases. Now, it will depend that which DNA polymerase it is involved in the addition of new bases. And this ability of the DNA polymerase that how much basis the, it is going to add, it is called as uh, the fidelity of the DNA uh, or in other terms, uh, uh, it is also called the processivity of the DNA polymerase. Processivity means that uh, uh, how many DNA bases the uh, DNA polymerase it is going to add before it dissociates the, uh, from the template DNA. Now, as I told you that DNA polymerases in E. coli, uh, they may be of different uh, types like DNA polymerase uh, 2 and DNA polymerase 3 that was that were discovered in the uh, 1970s. Or jo, uh, alawa, DNA polymerase 4 and 5 you can also find, but the principal type is DNA polymerase uh, 3 that is having high processivity and the principal enzyme in the DNA uh, synthesis or replication in E. coli. This is the list of uh, different uh, enzymes of uh, E. coli and their comparison like uh, DNA polymerase 1, 
2 and 3 and that how which is the structural gene that is involved in their synthesis what are different subunits what may be their molecular weight whether they are having 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease or endonuclease activity or proofreading activity and what is their polymerization rate and if we have a look on the processivity of the DNA the DNA polymerase 3 it is the most important that is it, it is having high processivity so initially when uh, PCR was used for the amplification of the DNA the DNA polymerase from E. coli was used because of its uh, high fidelity and low error rates uh, it mainly introduced for example after 1000 to 10,000 uh, replication of the cell uh, the error rate it is noted one uh, uh, one base pair so it is a very high fidelity of the DNA polymerase of uh, E. coli but uh, this is not well suited for PCR reaction we, that, that is exposed to high temperature repeatedly. So initially when DNA polymerase from E. coli it was used, uh, it has to be replaced or replenished after every uh, denaturation step in the PCR procedure. So it has increased the time and even the cost of DNA amplification. So now DNA polymerase it was worked at 37 degrees Celsius low temperature and equally DNA it is not working at high temperature so scientists and other biologists they find uh, another source for uh, uh, DNA polymerase that uh, uh, was stable at high temperature and uh, uh, this uh, DNA polymerase was isolated from a bacterium that was growing in hot springs are the hydrothermal vents at the uh, base of the ocean floors where hot springs were common uh, and even in the some other aquatic bodies on the land such some hot springs are present that can harbor such uh, thermophilic bacterium like the thermus aquaticus uh, it and that was the micro from where uh, the TAC DNA polymerase was isolated uh, TAQ it, it is from uh, the source of the micro from where uh, the DNA polymerase was isolated and it was commonly called as the TAC DNA polymerase. Now it can be used at high temperature but it is also having one disadvantage. This, a disadvantage was that uh, it lacks 3 prime to 5 prime proofreading activity. So errors that were introduced they were very high. So to overcome this problem scientists look towards another hyperthermophilic microbe like the pyrococcus furiosus PFU DNA polymerase then was isolated from pyrococcus furiosus and named was after the source PFU pyrococcus furiosus and the advantage was that it is having high proofreading activity and then it, it may be used alone or in combination with dark DNA uh, polymerase. So, with the passage of time, the E. coli DNA polymerases they were replaced with uh, more thermostable or heat stable DNA polymerases. In the last slide, I can uh, give the comparison or the sources of, of different type of thermostable DNA polymerases that were isolated from different microbes. First example is TMA. It was isolated from bacterium Thermotoga maritima and then deep vent from the ocean floats. Pyrococcus was isolated, then TLI DNA polymerase. It was from Thermococcus littoralis and then PFU, as I told you, that Pyrococcus furiosus and PWO DNA polymerase was isolated from Pyrococcus voice C.